Yo, it's Chris, and this is my review of the Pulsar X2 V2, specifically the size 1 or the mini version. The mouse retails for about $100, which I guess is pretty much the standard price for a gaming mouse these days. My hands are 18.5 by 10 centimeters, and honestly, this mouse fits me like a glove. The unboxing itself is very straightforward. The mouse comes with a braided cable in your standard 1K Hertz dongle, and of course, the 4K Hertz one is a paid DLC, and it's around 20 bucks. It also comes with your Pulsar gaming card and some light reading for the toilet. The mouse itself has a very safe shape with a hump towards the rear of the mouse. It works totally fine with pretty much any grip style. I got it with the intention of finger tipping it, but I actually ended up claw gripping it instead. The size of the mouse is 61 millimeters wide, 116 long, 37 tall, and it weighs around 51 grams. The coating is honestly an amazing upgrade from their previous coating from the Pulsar X2. Way better than I expected. Unfortunately, if you are like me and you got the black version, this thing is a fucking fingerprint magnet. If your hands are even the slightest bit moist, all of your fingerprints and hand oils and whatever will show on this mouse. It personally doesn't bother me, but it does look kind of gross. I didn't feel the need to use any sort of grips on the mouse. The coating is very rubbery and not slippery at all, especially when your hands warm up a little bit. It might be an issue if your hands sweat like an absurd amount, but I haven't heard any complaints for anyone else. So do with that what you will. The scroll wheel is using the Pulsar blue encoder and it's pretty good. Nothing mind blowing, but it's good. It has nicely defined notches and isn't the lightest scroll. So the Apex players might not exactly love it. But the rubber ring is very nice and grippy. Uh, unlike the one on my death adder, which honestly is a little slippery, but I didn't hate it, I just prefer something like this that is very grippy with the lightest touch you can just scroll. It comes with pre-applied skates and honestly they are pretty average. I tried them on my Artisan Hien and another control pad as well, but I tested them the most on this glass surface. But I did end up replacing them with the X-ray pad Obsidians after just two days for reasons I will get into shortly. But since we're on the bottom of the mouse, on this side, you can see the on and off switch. And on the other side, you can see the DPI switch. The mouse clicks have mild comfort grooves that I am personally a fan of, but you might not like the switches that come inside the mouse. The X2V2 and the X2V2 mini are using the ratio optical switches, which are not the best if you ask me. They somehow feel very stiff, but light at the same time. Best comparison that I've heard was that they feel like flicking a light switch on and off. And luckily there isn't much pre-travel, but there is a bunch of post-travel, especially if you click at the very front of the mouse. The side buttons, they are using the Huano white dot switches, which aren't the lightest in the world, but I feel like I would press them on accident if they were any lighter since the mouse is so small and my thumb rests right here. They have the slightest bit of pre-travel and a minor amount of post-travel, which didn't bother me whatsoever, and I would be lying if I said that I even noticed it in-game. Here's your sound test.
The mouse sports the Nordic MCU and the Pixart 33.95 sensor. Unfortunately, to get the mouse out of it, you'll need the 4K Hertz dongle, but the mouse works beautifully at 1K Hertz as well, and it's not like the 4K Hertz dongle is going to get you out of bronze anyway. It has a 300 milliamp hour battery, and the battery life is honestly pretty all right. I have never used the mouse at 1K for an extended period of time, but at 4K Hertz, the mouse lasts me about one and a half to two days on a full charge, depending how long I use it. That wasn't an issue for me since I always plug the mouse in at the end of the day, regardless of the remaining battery. But if you only charge whenever your mouse is almost dead, you shouldn't worry. It charges pretty fast anyway. In my testing, it went from 0% to 100% in roughly an hour, hour and a half. Now that the good is out of the way, it's time to get into the bad and the ugly. I have to start with the issue that the vast majority of people had the displeasure of experiencing, which would be the sticky clicks. My copy was no different and it developed sticky clicks after only two days of use, but the right click specifically developed sort of a pre-click. I bought it with the knowledge that it will more than likely develop this problem, so I was ready to do some DIY modding. Luckily, it was a super easy mod thanks to Melon's insanely helpful guide but I wouldn't expect the average person to do the same and Pulsar shouldn't either. This issue alone would make me not want to get this mouse because trust me, the clicks feel fucking disgusting without the mod. One more issue that people reported is that some of the copies have had bad tracking in game and I'm obviously not a scientist, so I wouldn't know the first thing about why that is happening, but I do know that it obviously shouldn't. Another issue that seems to be only happening to me since I couldn't find anything about it online, is that my mouse randomly stops working. This happened on a full charge as well, so it couldn't have been the battery. It happened on average every four to five days, and it started after maybe two weeks of use. So what would happen is that the tracking stopped working, all of the clicks stopped working, and the software wouldn't recognize the mouse. The only button that did work was the DPI one, but who cares since the tracking didn't work anyway. Plugging it in didn't work. Every time I moved the mouse, the 4K Hertz dongle would light up and so would the mouse. So it obviously was working. I even tried every single USB port on my computer, but that didn't fix the issue. I even tried plugging it in on a different computer and it worked totally fine. But as soon as I went back to my computer, it wasn't working at all. The only thing that would fix it would be a PC restart. I even reinstalled my Windows completely, but it happened as soon as I finished the installation. This is a super bizarre issue, which seems to luckily be an isolated case, but I still needed to mention it anyway. The semi good news is that all of the main issues seem to have been fixed on the collab versions, but not the classic black, white, and red versions. So if you want an actually functioning mouse, you better cuff up an extra $30 and another $20 for a dongle. But what I've heard, the Demon Slayer versions seem to have fixed the sticky clicks and also made the clicks lighter, which sure is great. But no matter how much they fix on the collab versions, they still didn't fix anything on the regular versions. All of this leads me to the question, should you get one? And the answer is no. Not anymore, at least. Unless you're okay with using the mediocre at best ratio switches, and probably having to fix the sticky click issue yourself, or if you want the Demon Slayer collaboration. While I personally love using the X2v2, keep in mind that I'm not the kind of person that gets a mouse out of necessity, I'm just another guy that likes trying out new products and collecting them. If you just want a mouse and are randomly looking for recommendations, this wouldn't be one of them, but if you're looking for something with a similar shape, go instead with the VXC R1 Pro, or the new Ninjutsu Sora V2, for which hopefully soon I'll have a review. With all that being said, if you've tried this mouse, please let me know in the comments what you thought about it or what you would like to see more of. If you've liked this review, please like the video and subscribe. You can also click the notification bell to not miss any of my future skits or ramblings. So anyways, that's it. See ya.